Instead of making it, uh, steaming this off, what I'm going to do now is take it and show two different techniques for making it that are rather unique. One is uh, the saute method, which is similar to the uh, seitan. I'm going to put this in two pieces and roll it tight. Again, it's that same principle. You want to roll it tight, integrate, uh, knock out all the air pockets in it, and try to keep it uh, a little on the small side, maybe about no more than three inches in diameter. It's a good size because it will expand again as it cooks like the seitan did. So it's just sort of roll it out. It can have little creases in it, that's okay. But just make sure that there are no air pockets in the center because you don't find that in a piece of uh, chicken when you're biting into it. It's solid meat. And if you do have it, it's okay. And this is not as important if you're going to dice it up and use it because you'll never notice. So I'm going to take half of it and cut it off here. And half I'm going to use for a poach method. And this half I'm going to uh, saute. Now this saute method is going to be a little different because when you're sauteing this chicken uh, protein, it'll create air pockets and, and sponge up a lot quicker. So what I'm going to do is slice them and brown them. And this will brown up a little faster also because it has mouth with extra in it. So if you leave it on a high heat really quick, it'll burn fast. You don't want to leave it on a high heat for a long period. The best way to work with these proteins is Medium heat. You don't want to go too much higher than that. I'm going to make a few cutlets here. And see, they can come out any shape they want. You can roll it up really tight and form a very round, oval, or round type shape, or you can just let it be like nature does it and just come up with whatever your shape size is. And see, you see just a little pocket in there? Now that shouldn't be there. That's what I'm trying to get rid of. I'll slice it again. Now I notice there's no pocket there. So that's the difference when I was talking about pressing it out and working it a little bit. So we've got a few cutlets here. The oil's heat, heated up. I'm using an Italian application here, so I'm going to use uh, olive oil. And again, you will notice how quick these brown up. It'll be rather fast, within about 30 seconds to a minute. And you can cut them thicker or thinner. The thicker you cut them, the longer they have to cook. And again, if they start get too hot too fast, they will form steam pockets. And those steam pockets uh, will make the product spongy. And again, you can sh um, shock it with something like ice water. I've done it with this using the same method that I used with the seitan, but I'm going to use a little different method here that's a little safer for those of you who are not too comfortable working with this type of product. You can see how it's starting to brown up a little bit, and it's just a little bit more brown, and I'll flip it over. And again, you can use this protein in a variety of ways. You can add dry ingredients to it. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, making what I call inclusions, where I add black beans and, and the confit of vegetables where I cook out moisture in them. Confit is basically a technique where you uh, cook the vegetable or the meat. It's usually referred to in classical French terms for duck, where they cook all the liquid out of it, which is a natural form of pres preservation that they use before they add refrigeration. But you can use that in this and just add those dry ingredients to the mix and let them sit in it for roughly about 15 minutes and then add your liquid and mix it as I did here and it comes up with a beautiful um, color, uh, texture uh, that you're adding and nutrition to the product. Notice how these are browning up. This is pretty brown right there. And they will start uh, sponging on on you too, just like the seitan will. So instead of adding liquid, though, if you add liquid, it'll continue to sponge out, even if you shock it. It can, it can do that. So what I do is I just add uh, a sauce. Now, this velouté sauce was made uh, with uh, Iku Cuisine's chicken broth. And the chicken broth is really uh, a recommended item to serve with the chicken quick mix, simply because it uh, is used to make things like this sauce or to enhance the flavor of a sauce that it's being used in to give it more of a chicken flavor, because when you make chicken, normally the chicken flavor 
parts into the sauce, and here it takes up flavor. So here we're going to pour the, the uh, sauce into it. And the deep a little bit here. Let it simmer for a bit. Then we just let this simmer for roughly about uh, 20 minutes. And then uh, we have cutlets. Okay, so this has been cooking about 20 to 25 minutes and the protein is fully cooked and firm. So what I want to do is uh, show you what it looks like when it's sliced. And another thing you remember about this also is that you can use uh, this steam method with this where I sauteed it as when I got to the point of adding the sauce to it. Instead of doing it in a saucepan, you can literally put it into a steam table pan, cover it with sauce, put a uh, plastic over the top of it, aluminum foil, stick it in a steamer, and let it steam for 25 minutes. So if you're in mass production and doing this for several hundred people, just put it in uh, shallow full-size steam pans uh, oiled, cover it with sauce, uh, put a lid over it, and then let it go in the steam pan. So you can mass produce it. This is more of a Western style technique. This is your mass production technique. Anyway, here is what it looks like when you slice it. Notice how tight that is in terms of texture. You can slice it so thin, it's really firm. So you can slice it almost paper thin if you want. I've only did about an eighth of an inch here. And notice the texture of it. It just sits there. It's got the texture of a piece of meat. And it's firm. There's no uh, air pockets in it. It's got a nice bite to it, a nice mouth feel. It has a wonderful flavor. And the velouté sauce, again, picks up that flavor. So it gives you an idea. So if I was serving this, I could do it um, as a piccata, as a fricassee, and put vegetables in it, make it a stew, doing the deep, uh, cube version. The other thing is you can just, if you have a deep fryer committed just to vegetarian food, you can just dip these in a deep fryer for like 20 seconds, not even 20 seconds, maybe 5 seconds, 10 seconds. Just dip them in to the brown them, put them in the pan, cover them with sauce, and, and move on. It's really quick. And it's really easy to work with. So, again, just recap on this. It's just saute it, add a sauce to it, and let it simmer in the sauce. Or you can put it in a steam table pan and um, cover it with sauce, a ratatouille type sauce, just a tomato sauce, mar marinara sauce, whatever kind of sauce you want to use, and um, basically let it steam for about 20 to 25 minutes, and that's it. So next, we're going to go to uh, the poaching method. Okay, the next method here is the poaching method. Now, this is the simplest method on earth. Take this mix that we just mixed up, uh, the chicken quick mix, just Cut it into cubes. Notice how it feels. It's almost like a, a stiff bread dough, it's almost like a hard uh, French bread dough. And all I do is dice it up, drop it right into the sauce, just like so. Mix it in there. I'll get it all diced up first. And see if you got a little pocket in it there, it doesn't make any difference because you're going to dice it and nobody's going to see it. You can dice this as big or as small as you want uh, to get in, and this will pick up 15% in weight. So if you're adding uh, 10 pounds of this mix of this chicken quick mix to the sauce and the poaching method, it will pick up uh, roughly about 15% weight moisture from the sauce, which means you probably have to thin the sauce out a little bit once it starts uh, uh, cooking because it'll keep absorbing and drying out. You lose it through flash off, but you're gonna lose it even through the product. But chicken is, when it's picking up that moisture, it's picking up the flavor of that sauce also, which is really the neat thing about it. And you could put this in a steamer if you wanted to, if you didn't, if you didn't have a steam kettle. If you do, what I normally do is get it in a steam kettle and let it cook for like about 15 or 20 minutes. And then I take it out uh, just turn it off and let it cook in its ambient heat. If you're doing about a 10 gallon uh, mix or something, uh, you're going to be roughly uh, probably a good hour with ambient heat and be really hot. So, what I normally do, this is a sauteed cacciatore sauce. I sauteed mushrooms, peppers, onions, garlic, and put the Italian seasonings in it. But what I do to give it a little bit more of a chicken type flavor 
is I add a little of this to it, a little of the uh, eucalyptusine chicken broth. So it kind of takes it in the direction of chicken. So when you're eating the sauce, you almost feel like you're eating sauce that was cooked in chicken. You don't have to add a lot, just a little bit. It's just an option. It's just an enhanced flavor. And again, these uh, broths can be used to make uh, sauces, uh, soups. Um, you can use them in breading. They have a lot of applications. And uh, a reminder that I have extensive recipe applications for each one of these products. OK, this has been cooking for roughly about a half hour now. And these pieces of protein are firm. I will show you just how firm on the table here by slicing one of them. Notice the uh, texture on that, how firm that is. Really, it's like a piece of uh, chicken white meat, like a piece of breast that's been cooked to perfection. Moist, nice mouthfeel, nice flavor. And these pieces actually expanded in size. It's kind of hard to tell. Some of them, but here's a good example of you know, how small I cut them. Look how large they look now. So it does pick up that 15% uh, weight in the, in the cooking process. And again, this is a simple one. You cannot really um, mix it up, uh, mess it up too bad. The only thing to be careful of is, first of all, I wouldn't be using a wooden spoon. I, a metal spoon, if I'm going to stir it, I would use a, a, a wooden spoon. Um, in the beginning, but what I normally do is add the protein into it and then mix it up so that it's uh, sitting in the sauce well and then just leave it. If you continue mixing it once, it's, once you put it in there, it'll rip this apart while it's starting to cook because remember it went in soft and if you don't give it a chance to put them up, it will pull apart. So the point being, once you add the soft uh, protein, uh, chicken quick mix to it, simmering sauce, just let it set. Uh, don't uh, mix it for at least a good uh, 30 minutes. If you have to work on the sauce and if you got it in a kettle or a pan that can burn, just make sure that you're working the um, bottom of the kettle so you don't burn the sauce because that can also happen. Or again, you can stick it in a steamer. So here we have another application for the uh, chicken stock quick mix and I call it the inclusions where I take uh, sauteed vegetables, I cook them to the point of being a confit, which is basically cooking all the moisture on them. It's a French term, which they normally use with duck. And I uh, cook all the moisture out. Then I add beans to the dry mix without anything else, just in the dry mix, and let them sit for like 15 minutes. So it creates a little binder on the vegetables. Then I add the water and the oil and steam it. And then in the steaming process, um, it's just like the regular process uh, that I use with the seitan. But at this point, it's ready to eat, and here's what you have. A beautiful kaleidoscope of color, additional nutrition. It'll bring your food cost down as much as 25 to 50%, because you can add two to three times as much as what I have in here. It's just a matter of how far you want to go with it. And you can also steam this right in the pan, as I mentioned previously, with, uh, with what I started out with the chicken. So this product has a lot of different uh, applications, and the key factor here is you can use any kind of vegetable, any kind of bean you want to this to increase the yield on the protein itself and bring the food cost down. And with the um, chicken cacciatore, what, I, what you can do is add more beans to it. Like if an Italian this is a cacciatore, so you could add uh, fava beans or something else and do. Uh, um, a chicken cacciatore with fava beans in it. And what I'm going to do here is just place this up to show you how beautiful it looks. You take some of this chicken and put it on top of some angel hair pasta here. Real simple, elegant. And hit, hit it with a little bit of sauce, uh, parsley. And a little more chicken on there. And again, you can have uh, any combination of sauces will work with this. And here what we have is a chicken cacciatore with angel hair pasta. And you saw how easy it is to make. Again, recipe applications come with this product, and there are many different uh, techniques to work with it. This gives you the basic, the two, the poaching uh, and the saute. You saw the steaming with the seitan. So you have a good idea of how to work with this protein. Very easy to work with. Again, recipe applications are available when you order the product, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.